Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will learn about Pelvic Inflammatory Diseases on Ultrasound. Pelvic inflammatory disease includes infections and inflammation of the uterus, ovaries and fallopian tubes. Diseases include endometritis which is inflammation of the endometrium, cervicitis that is inflammation of the cervix, hydrosalpings, which refers to a fluid-filled dilated fallopian tube, biosalpings, which refers to a pus-filled fallopian tube, and tubo-ovarian abscess. The first case is endometritis. The most common cause of endometritis is after childbirth. These are Transvaginal images showing the uterus. The image on the left is of a normal uterus in longitudinal plane. The endometrium is smooth and hyperechoic. The image on the right is of endometritis. Ultrasound appearance of the uterus can also be normal in endometritis. One of its features is disruption of endometrial myometrial junction. We cannot clearly see the junction between the endometrium and myometrium. The endometrium is not clearly seen. It is heterogeneous in appearance and appears thickened. The next feature which is usually associated with endometritis is subserosal hypoechoic rim. You can see a dark hypoechoic border around the uterus. Normally we see a bright hyperechoic border around the uterus. The hypoechoic rim represents fluid due to inflammation. A subserosal fibroid is also present in this image. A heterogeneous endometrial cavity is usually seen in endometritis. However, this feature needs to be correlated clinically. In this image on the left, power Doppler is applied to detect slow blood flow in the uterus. In the image on the right, color Doppler is applied. The endometrial cavity is filled with hypoechoic fluid. A subserosal hypoechoic rim is also present. When these two features are present, you may find increased vascularity in and around the endometrium due to inflammation. Air in the uterus may also be present in some cases of endometritis. Air in the uterus appears as hyperechoic dots and hyperechoic lines with dirty posterior shadowing. A dirty shadow appears grey instead of jet black. It is not as prominent as a clean black shadow seen behind dense structures. Here is another image showing air in the uterus in a case of endometritis. Hyperechoic dots with dirty grayish posterior acoustic shadowing are seen. Cold sac is this region behind the uterus in this image. Normally it does not contain any hypoechoic fluid. However, in some cases minimal amount of fluid, a very small amount of fluid is normal. Endometritis can lead to accumulation of fluid in the cul-de-sac. Here we can see hypoechoic fluid in the cul-de-sac posterior to the uterus. Here is another image showing a significant amount of fluid in the cul-de-sac. This feature is not specific to endometritis 
but is commonly seen in such cases when clinically correlated. Cervicitis is the inflammation of the cervix. It can be caused by infections, allergies, or irritation. On ultrasound, it may appear as an enlarged, heterogeneous cervix. Hydrocelpinx is a condition where a fallopian tube becomes blocked and filled with fluid. This can result from infection or other causes, and it often affects fertility. A normal fallopian tube is not visible on ultrasound. Hydrocelpinx appears as a dilated, fluid-filled, hypoechoic structure outside the uterus and ovary. This structure will have internal septations and indentations. This is another image showing internal septations and indentations in a fluid-filled structure which was found outside the uterus and ovaries. A pyocelpinx refers to a pus-filled fallopian tube. It has almost all the same features as hydrocelpinx except for one, which is internal echoes inside this structure. Medium level echoes will be seen inside the structure. This is another case showing pyocelpinx. Internal echoes can be seen inside this dilated, fluid-filled structure outside the uterus and ovary. A tubo-ovarian abscess is a serious PID complication. It will be present in patients with any untreated pelvic infection. It is often bilateral, but it can be unilateral. The patient can have tenderness during a transvaginal ultrasound scan. On ultrasound, a tubo-ovarian abscess appears as a hypoechoic structure with internal echoes and multiple locules. In the adnexa, usually on both left and right sides, but it can be unilateral. A locule is a compartment or a chamber. These are multiple compartments in this image with walls or septations. This structure is in the right adnexa. In this case, the left adnexa also had tubo-ovarian abscess, a multilocular structure with internal echoes and thick irregular walls is seen next to the left ovary. So this was a bilateral case of tubo-ovarian abscess. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.